another live stream. Uh, I'm just getting the last few things set up, but today we are going to do something rather interesting uh, because today we are actually going to be playing. We, we are not really going to be playing anything, at least to start. Um, instead, what we are going to do is we are going to be creating a tier list. So basically, for those of you who don't know what a tier list is, it's kind of a uh, kind of parody. I don't want to say it's a parody, but it's basically it's something that is. It's kind of oh, a, whoops! Sorry, my Twitch uh, uh, thing is in the background. So, sorry about that. But essentially, this is kind of a parody of those tier lists you might see for like fighting games or whatever. And hello, Shivers, how you doing? Sorry, I'm just getting the last few things set up. Um, but yeah, so basically we're going to be creating a tier list for the Mavericks in Mega Man X. So basically, for the, again, for those of you who don't know, it's basically kind of a parody of what a tier list is in fighting games, where it determines who is the best character in the game, all the way down to who is the worst character. So I already have the template set up, and we're going to fill in all of the um, Mavericks for the tier list. So... I don't, I don't know how long this will take. I, I think it will probably take about an hour, if I had to guess. Um, first off, some ground rules. Um, we are only doing the stage select Mavericks. So we are not including Sigma or, you know, like Vile, the X-Hunters, the Nightmare Police, uh, Iris and Double, Dynamo, Gate, Red, Lumine. We're not including any of those guys because obviously they would be higher tier than like all the stage select Mavericks considering they're like the... This, they're part of the core cast of that game. We're all, so, or like Burkana, Gareth, Zane Gimel, um, any of the Command Mission Mavericks. We're not doing any of those. Epsilon, whatever. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing any of those. We are focusing on the stage select Mavericks for the X series because otherwise it will take too long. Like, to be quite frank, it would take way too long. And we are going to just stick with the... Um, we are just going to stick with the, uh, the stage select Mavericks for now. If this is popular, I might do another one where we go back and do like another sort of tier list. Maybe like the Robot Masters from Classic Mega Man or something like that. But for now, we are going to do the Mavericks. Just I think this is appropriate because remember, the first ever Let's Play we did on this channel was Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2. So as a result, I feel like that's a decently appropriate thing to start with. Yep, we're getting it. We're doing a tier list. So just give me a second to set up. I'm using the retro tag right now. Because, wait, is my mic off? Because you said, dang, no Mac. Is it, is my mic off? Or like, did you mean, did you mean to say mic? Or am I doing something wrong? Just let me know if my audio is good or, or whatever. Um, if we finish this in time, we'll do something else. I have a feeling we will finish this before three hours. There's, there's no way this will take three hours. I'm thinking maybe one hour. Okay, my mic is good. That's good. I'm thinking this will maybe take one hour at maximum, maybe even shorter than that. We can't see the best Maverick of X3. What is it? Bitter, bit Biter Dr. Doppler? Is that who you're thinking of? Or is someone else? Oh, you're talking about Mao the Giant. All right, from the, the, the intro stage. Yeah, we're not including the mechanoloids from the intro stage so i mean i know technically in x1 you fight vile and in extreme as well but you know what i mean like we're not gonna have mechan giant mechanoloids cf0 from x2 mao mao from x3 elegion from x4 the sigma head from x5 was it d1000 and x6 i don't remember the one in x7 or x8 i don't know the names of those two i can look those up though um, I mean, like I said, I'm going to be using my web browser for this, so I can actually just look these up. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll get into my thoughts on the Mavericks soon. All right, I think we're just about ready to go. Just give me one more second to set a fi few final things up. I'm, it's bothering me that I can't remember the names of the intro stage bosses for X7 and X8, especially when I listed off all of the other ones. So let's... Um, I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna look up what those got what the what those guys are called because I feel like a dunce. Alright, let's see. Hold on. In X7, you fight Mega Scorpio. Right. It's it's the giant scorpion type boss. I was like, what is that guy called? I can't remember. 
And then in Mega Man X8, it's Crab's Y. All right. I should have known that. That's my bad. But And in X Extreme 2, it's, uh, oh, what is it? Skullhead, I think his name is. Let me... Yeah, Skullhead. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, this is only... Remember, this is only the bosses from X1 through X8, and it's only the states like Mavericks. Otherwise, it will take too long. So, we're going to start. All right. Can you guys see my, um, my tier list? Hopefully you can. I just switched to the Maverick tier, or the Maverick tab, because I'm going to get up information on all the Mavericks. All right. Good. So let's get... Uh, I guess I should explain the rankings and why there's so many of them. But basically, these are the rankings from actual Mega Man X. These are the uh, Maverick Hunter rankings. So in Mega Man X6, for example, the rankings go from E to D, C, B, A, S, A, S, G, A, P, A, M, E, H, and U, H. So we're going to use these rankings because that's how, that's how it works in X6. There's a lot of them. But it will also give us a little bit of variety so we can truly determine which um, which Maverick is the best. And by the way, just, just to make it clear, M-E-H does not mean meh. It means like, what, is it, what does it mean? Oh, it's M-M-H technically. Oh, that's the highest ranking X5, which is the same as U-A. All right, so let me actually take out M-E-H because this is technically, yeah, let's delete that. So never mind, it's E-D-C-B-A-S-A-S-G-A-P-A and U-H. So... I didn't realize MMH was the same thing as UH. That's my bad, yeah. Because this is the highest rank in X5, and this is the highest rank in X6. So I was going for X6 mostly, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with this. So yeah, GA stands for Gold A, PA stands for Platinum A, UH stands for Ultimate Hunter, and SA stands for Special A. And yes, I will hydrate. Actually, that water bottle is out, so I might need to grab some more water if, the, if I run out of this. All right, so we've spent more than enough time. Actually, I just realized I have a program open in the background that is probably taking up a lot of space. So just give me one second to close out of this program. I just realized I probably should have done that earlier. All right, there we go. That'll make my computer stop uh, worrying quite a lot. So apologies if my speed was a bit slow. And just ignore these ads. I don't know if I can close out of them, but just ignore the ads. So, all right, let's do this. So we are starting with Avalanche Yeti, who is from X8. So, like, so yeah, this is who we're starting with. He is the Guardian of Eternally Frozen Fields or the Permafrost Caretaker. Um, I don't know. I, I quite like Yeti. Um, I'm, I'm not sure he's my favorite, but I think he's pretty good. I'll put him in A rank. I think I think Yeti's pretty decent. I, I I like him. He's he's not the worst Maverick ever. He's not the best Maverick ever. He's he's pretty good though. I I, I think he's he, I, I think he's like he's pretty pretty average. I like I like Yeti. All right. So next up is Bamboo Pandemonium, who is also from X Eight, and he is the fallen giant of the forest. Oh, there's there's like these little sprites here. That's cool. What are these from? Oh, X Over. That makes sense. Um, where do I want to put pandemonium? And if you guys have any suggestions or like you think I'm doing something really stupid, let me know and we can we can discuss it a little bit. I think pandemonium is not as cool as Yeti. I think he's, he's he's still pretty good though. Uh, let's see. I'll put him in, I'll put him in in uh in in C rank. He's not, he I think he's actually no B rank because I I think C is kind of underselling him. I think pandemonium is pretty okay. He's not my he's not my favorite, but he's he's definitely a pretty decent maverick. I'll give him that. Uh, next up is Burn Rooster. We got we got we're starting off a lot of uh, X eight mavericks today. I see. And Burn Rooster is known as the White Hot Fowl or the Flaming Coxcomb, which is an interesting name. Um, I think Rooster is definitely in the higher echelons than Avalanche Yeti or. Bamboo Pandemonium, so let's see. I do like Burn Rooster, though. I think he's pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, I'll put Burn Rooster in SA, because I think he's definitely above average. But he's also not, like... Um, he's not amazing, but he's, he's, he's pretty... I, I, I like to think he's above average, so... 
Yeah, let's go with uh, let's go with SA for that. Uh, next up is, is Cyber Peacock, and I really like Cyber Peacock from uh, X4. Let's see what his nickname is. He is the Network Guardian, so here's Peacock. Yeah, he's one of my favorites, so he's definitely going to be in one of the higher tiers. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if I would quite put him in UH. He's not my favorite Maverick, but he's he's definitely really cool. Um, that's interesting, Trash Man. Why don't you like Cyber Peacock that much? I'm I'm think I'm between PA and GA for this one. And again, if you guys have any suggestions, you guys can definitely let me know. And I'm looking over here because um, basically because I have a second monitor, so this is how I'm uh, streaming this. It's a neat touch that in his intro dialogue, he talks about X's specs and X1. Yeah, I know, right? That's a really cool uh, touch that really makes Cyber Peacock stand out from the rest. He, like, knows X super well because he analyzed him throughout the uh, the stage. I don't know. I, I, I'm i a little torn on Peacock. I think he should go in one of these. I'm going to put him in, in GA for now because he's not my, like, absolute favorite, but he's definitely really cool, so... Let's let's go with that for now. All right, who's next? Yeah, his stage is a really cool mechanic. Although remember, we're not talking about the stages. We're we're talking about the Mavericks in particular. So it can be about how they fight, how they um you know how they look or what their techniques are. Just anything about the Maverick itself, not necessarily the stage and, and its quality. Also, the boss fight against them. Um, Cyber's kind of a generic, I don't know if I'd call him a generic smart robot, but he definitely leans into a trope that is similar to that, I suppose. Um, all right, so next up is Dark Mantis from X8. We're going back to the X8 Mavericks now. Um, and he's known as the Deadly Blade Lurking in the Darkness, or the Sharp Blade Hidden in the Shadows. Um, I'd say Mantis is pretty good, but he's also, he's once again, not necessarily my favorite favorite one let's see um i'm thinking b tier honestly because he's he's just kind of eh. i don't know yeah i'll put him in b tier i'll put him behind i'll put him above pandemonium but he's not like my favorite maverick he's just kind of all right you really like dark manis that's fair manis is pretty interesting he's just i don't know he feels kind of a little generic to me like look at this quote you don't understand a thing do you there is no such thing as good and evil you haven't realized that yet have you i don't know i just feel like that's a little generic of a quote and it, and that personality is not like it doesn't pop out to me like cyber peacocks does so i'm gonna put him in b tier and welcome Ooh, i apologize if i pronounce this wrong welcome x sky you cow again if i'm pronouncing that wrong i sincerely apologize but um yeah, so let's let's see. Um, just give me a second. I gotta fix something real quick. Um, but yes, welcome to the stream. I hope you do enjoy yourself. Uh, all right. Sorry, I need to check something real quick. That's his worst quote. The others are much better. What are his other quotes at you? Because we can take a look. Um, let's see. Like, I want to see you cry. I'll rip you apart. I don't know. This is just a little generic to me. It's a parody of XQ Cow. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll pronounce it like that. Thank you. I, I apologize for the incorrect pronunciation there, but I will pronounce it like that. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I'm going to put him in B tier for now. Next. Oh, okay. I already know where I'm placing Flame High Nerd from Mega Man X7, who is the crazy warrior cloaked in flames. You are going in E tier. There is. I am not. Th th yeah, that's. Flame Heinert is garbage. He is one of the worst characters in the entire series. So that is a very easy E tier. Yes, burn, indeed. Uh, Flame Heinert sucks. <laughs> he really sucks. So that's quite simple. Um, all right, next up is Gigabolt Man of War from Mega Man X8. <laughs> Ground to the burn. <laughs> I love that. All right, so now we got Gigabolt Man of War. He is known as the High Voltage Drifter or the High Voltage Castaway. Um, I would say he's, I would say Man of War is probably my favorite Maverick in X8, but that's not necessarily saying much. So I'm going to put him in SA above Rooster. He's not, he's not my, he's not a, a amazing Maverick, but I definitely think he stands out at least a little bit above the rest. So 
I'll I'll put Man of War in in S in S A. You think he's in B tier? That's pretty low. But I'm curious as to why. I don't know. I just, I just think Man of War's kind of personality makes him stand out a bunch, and I like his boss fight. It's pretty interesting. Even though I don't like his stage, I mean, remember, we're not talking about the stages here. We're talking about the um, the Mavericks themselves. So I'll, I'll put him in SA for now. But I know Trash Man is uh, kind of meh on Man of War. And, and I, I'm curious, because a lot of people in the chat are not, as, are not as big of a fan of Man of War as I am. By the way, for those of you who don't know what a Man of War is, it's supposed to be a jellyfish. Um, like, a Man of War is a type of jellyfish, so that's, that's what he's supposed to be. Um, I know that not everyone knows that, but that's completely fair. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to why people don't like Man of War that much. That's, that's, that's curious. I don't know. I feel like he's pretty, he's pretty cool. Like, he's just kind of like, I'm no maverick. What is a maverick kind of quotes? Well, he's, well, you're right that he says I'm no maverick, but he's, he's basically doing what he thinks is right, which I think is a little interesting. And he's very naive. And obviously there's the naive villain is nothing new, but I feel like this, this game does it in an interesting enough way that I don't necessarily hate it. Also, I like this uh, full, bot, this 3D artwork here. That's pretty cool. His stage is terrible though. I do not like it. It's called Gigabolt Man of War in X in the English version, which is a little weird, but whatever. Um, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in SA. You can say that about some other X bosses. That's true, but I mean, do you think he's? I mean, I'm willing to move Burn Rooster down, but do you really think he's worse than Rooster? I feel like I feel like Rooster at the very least is 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 worse than Man of War. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um. All right, let's let's let, for now let's continue with the next one, who is Gravity Antonian, which was also from X Eight. We're definitely starting with a lot of the uh, X Eight Mavericks, and we have the Twister of Space and Time. Antonian is actually pretty cool. I like him, so I'm gonna put him in. Uh, I'm gonna put him in S A tier, probably right right above uh, Rooster. I actually really like Gravity Antonian. He's pretty cool. Not my favorite, but he's he's pretty rad. Um, so yeah. All right, next up is Bubble Crab for Mega Man X2. Bubble Crab is actually not one of my favorites. Um, we were just talking about him earlier in the uh, Keep Giga and SA, just put Rooster in front of him. Uh, I mean, I guess I could. I just don't know if, I, I don't know. I, I'm, not a, I'm not as huge on Rooster as I am on like Gigabolt Man of War or Gravity Antonian. I don't know. Um, Bubble Crab is pretty cool. He's the Shredder of the Deep. I'm not necessarily sure he's my favorite. Uh, Bubble Crab can run Doom, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna put him in A. He's 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 not my favorite. I think he's definitely better than some of these guys, but he's he's interesting enough. I mean, he's he's definitely uh, what was his quote actually? I don't know if he has a quote. I don't, yeah, like he doesn't necessarily have a quote. I like the sprite though. That's pretty cool. I don't know. He's he's all right. I mean, he's he's he's. His strongest suit is that he's in the sixth naval unit and he worked with Wheel Gator. And he doesn't like Wheel Gator, but that's not... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put him in B tier. Just because, I don't know. I feel like he, he's not like the most personality driven. He's not like the... He's not, he doesn't have the best personality about him. There's not really, we don't really know much about Bubble Crab, so I'm going to leave him right there. Um, Alright, next up is Crystal Snail, who is also from Mega Man X2. And he is the Crystal Magician. Uh, I do not like Crystal Snail that much. I'm putting him in C tier. Uh, I find his boss fight to be very, very annoying, especially if you don't have his weakness. And there's not much interesting about him. I mean, I guess that is, it's, it's interesting that he... Like, look at this. His origins and motives are a mystery. Like, what's that supposed to mean? I legitimately don't know. So, yeah. Crystal Snail's definitely on the lower end. I'm putting him in C. He's, he's not my favorite. <laughs> so... Uh, alright, so, let's go to the next one, which is Flame Stag from Mega Man X2. Uh, he is the Hard Knuckle Champ- or sorry, Heat Knuckle Champion. Definitely going in at least A, if not higher. Because Flame Stag's pretty cool. Uh, where do I want to put him? I'm gonna put him in an S. Flame Stag is- I love his boss fight. It is- it's very interesting because- he definitely, his, his boss is, is pretty unique in that it's such a vertical room. 
and I love his design. And yeah, Flamestag is really cool. I will definitely put him in S tier because he does a lot of really interesting things. And look at this. He defected alongside Boomer Kawanga. That's some really cool uh, lore there. So yeah, Flamestag is going in S. He's pretty, he's pretty rad. And speaking of really high tier Mavericks, we also have Magnus Centipede from Mega Man X2. He's also one of my favorites from that game. He is awesome. Um... So, like, look at this. So, he's the Crimson Assassin. He was captured by Sigma's forces during Sigma's first uprising and brainwashed. That's kind of interesting. That's some, that's, more, that's some more lore about the series. Where Sigma took hostages during the first time and brainwashed people. Like, that, that's some cool lore. And plus, Magnus Centipede's fight is awesome. He can take away your moves, which sounds difficult, and it is. But it makes the boss fight really interesting. So... I'm putting Ma Magnus Centipede in PA. I freaking love Magnus Centipede. He is really cool. He's got, a, he's got an interesting character. He's got a great design. He's got some really cool trivia, and his lore is great. And his lore is interesting, so easy PA tier. Um, also, fun fact, in Japan, he's known as Ma or like Magna Hyaku Legger because Hyaku means 100 in Japan, and then Legger is just leg. So he literally means Magna 100 legs in Japan. I don't know. I, I always found that to be pretty funny. Like, they, they, they took the name literally. I wonder if it says it in the trivia section. Yeah, here it is. Magna Hyaku Legger. See? Because it's a portmanteau of Hyaku and Legger. <laughs> like, that's such a weird name. But it works. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Magna Centipede is pretty, is pretty awesome. Uh, Alright, who's next? Next up is, is, a, is Morph Moth. From, also from Mega Man X2. Um, Morph Moth definitely has one of the more unique fights, so he's definitely going in at least A tier. Not sure if I'm going to put him too much above that, because I don't remember him having much unique lore. Uh, he's the Fallen Angel from the Island of Dreams. Let's see, he's a prototype advanced with advanced circuitry and has the unique ability to absorb scrap from other Reploids to power himself up. That's pretty cool. I actually kind of like that. So, all right, I guess I'll put him in, in a bit of a higher tier. I'm thinking probably S or GA, because Morph Moth's pretty rad. Hey, Vash, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying, hope you're having a good day. And today, we are making a Mega Man X Maverick tier list. So, we're doing pretty well right now. And we are on Morph Moth from Mega Man X2. Um, and welcome as well, Community Mod Chen. Hope you're having a good day as well. All right, uh, I'm going to put Morph Moth just below... I'm going to put him above Flamestag, actually, in S tier. Because he... And, and even then, this is really close. Because Flamestag is also really cool. But I think Morph Moth's lore of having really advanced circuitry to, to absorb scrap is just the tiniest bit more interesting than Flamestag's, like, uh, hiding in a volcano and whatnot. So I'm going to put Morph Moth in S right above Flamestag. He's pretty awesome. All right, and let's keep the Mega Man X2 Mavericks going because we're starting. We're, we're going off to Overdrive Ostrich from Mega Man X2. Uh, he is also known as the Swift Runner of the Sands, and it looks like he originally had the ability to fly, but he lost it for some reason. It doesn't really say why, and Sigma basically brought him into the Maverick army with the speed. Um. All right, so I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm not the hugest fan of Ostrich. Um, he's definitely not the worst Maverick in the world. He's going in at least B. But I, I find his boss fight to be it just kind of drags on and on a bit too much. And like you have to use Crystal Hunter, which isn't the best at hitting him, if I remember correctly. Actually, I mean his his weakness is gonna be right here. Uh. Yeah, you have to use Crystal Hunter, or I guess if you're playing Extreme 2, you would use Strike Chain. But Trash Man says Overdrive must be in either the top two tiers. I don't know. I I'm thinking he's one of the, he's one of the mid tiers because I'm not the hugest fan of Ostrich. His fight takes forever. Like I don't know. I'm just I'm not the hugest fan of him. I'm not gonna put him in like C tier, obviously, since he's pretty good. But he's not the best. Ma I'm, yeah, all right, you know what? I'm gonna put him in A, just above just above Avalanche Yeti because. Again, his fight is not the best. I, his lore is kind of interesting with him losing the ability to fly. That's about it, I would say. Not, not really much else. I mean, his music is pretty cool. But he's not like, I don't know. 
His involvement in the background of the boss fight is kind of cool. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. It's an interesting idea. But it's, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's not as interesting as something like Flame Stag or Morph Moth, where, like, the boss changes as it goes along. So, I'm going to put Ostrich in A tier. All right, next up is, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you guys. This saddens me to say this, but we, we have Wheel Gator from Mega Man X2, who is the evil fanged heavy tank. Favorite Maverick in terms of design, favorite music in Mega Man X2, I hate his boss. His boss is so annoying because he spends half the time under the oil. So, even though I love Wheel Gator's design, I can't put him above A because his boss fight is really stupid. It just takes forever to hit him. So, I, I'm, I'm thinking A or B. Yeah, his boss fight is not good. It just takes forever to do. Even if you have his weakness, Strike Chain, it still takes forever to do. So I'm I'm thinking I put him in B just because I I don't know. He he his boss isn't the best. I, I'd say he's better than Bubble Crab or he's worse than Bubble Crab, but he's not as bad as like Crystal Snail. Cause Bubble Crab at least has a some semi-interesting boss fight. Yeah, alright. I'm gonna put him in B. I'm gonna put him just just over here because um I don't know. His his design is great. His music is awesome. His lore is really interesting. I, I'm sure it's... it's Basically, he attacked a fellow hunter and was treated as a traitor because of his destructive impulses. And because because he already had destructive impulses, Sigma's, Sigma did not have to do much to convince him. Like, that's actually kind of interesting. But his boss fight is just so annoying that I just... I can't put him above B. I just can't. So, that's, that's really unfortunate. Because I, I actually do kind of like... Uh, I do kind of like Gator, but nope, can't really put him above that. All right, next up is Wire Sponge from Mega Man X2. So, let's see. So, we have the Little Forest Demon. Um, I'd say Wire Sponge is pretty good. Uh, let's see. I mean, I, I, I like Wire Sponge. He's not like my favorite Maverick in X2, but he's still pretty cool. So, I'm, I'm, I'll definitely put him in at least like A or something like that. I'm, I'm thinking A. May, maybe B, but he's he's not like my favorite, but he's also not like super offensive. Yeah, his fight is okay, not not as huge on his design. I'll give him I'll give them credit for choosing a maverick that's not an animal. Like that is pretty interesting, but I'm not necessarily sure if I would put him super high. And yeah, as Trashman says, he's basically the reason he's a maverick is because he has a personality disorder, as the wiki says here. He's basically childish and easily amused. So, that's that's actually some interesting lore. So, I'm, I'm going to put him in A, just below, um, just below Avalanche Yeti. Because, like I said, his design isn't the best, but his, his lore is pretty interesting, and his boss fight's okay, so. Uh, yes, Wire Sponge has a cameo in ZX Advent. If you go to the Tower of Verdor, you can find him in, amongst the remains. So... All right, now we're moving on to the Mega Man X3 Mavericks. We got Blast Hornet, who's one of my favorites from that game. He is the Flying Spy of Shadows. I like the fact that these sprites are animated here. That's kind of cool. Um, I mean, he's not necessarily... Oh, wait, he's a former co-worker of Zeros, which is... That's kind of interesting. He's very self-aware of his weakness and consciously tries to become a better person. That's actually kind of cool. So I was originally going to put... Blast Hornet in like S, but I'm thinking it might actually it might actually be like G A or something because Blast Hornet's awesome. Um, it's just that his lore. There's not much to his lore other than he was a former friend of Zeros, and I mean, a lot of the Mavericks betrayed the 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 uh, Maverick Hunters. But I, I like the fact that he's constantly working on being a better person. That's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, Blast Hornet became a Maverick because of Zeros' actions. That's actually pretty cool. Like, that's some unique lore to the uh, the character, and that definitely gives him a bit more of a personality. I'm going to put him in GA, just below Cyber Peacock, because he's a, his boss fight's really fun, his design is pretty cool, and I like his lore. So, GA it is. All right, next up is Blizzard Buffalo from Mega Man X3, and his boss fight is so easily cheesable, which is a problem. I like his, I like his design. His design looks pretty cool. He's the... He's a slippery snowman. But I'm not sure if I'd put him super duper high. 
Yeah, the X6 guys will definitely go up quite a bit. Um, I'm thinking Buffalo probably belongs in A or SA, because he's pretty cool. He's not my favorite, but he's, he's pretty cool. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm a little torn on, on Buffalo. I'm thinking A tier. What do you guys think about that? I think that probably makes the most sense. Probably just above Ostrich, just because, um, I remember in the manga, he's a, he's, he like almost takes out Frost, Frost Walrus, which is really cool. Um, he originally, look at this, he was originally created for ski slope security. That's, that's kind of hilarious, honestly. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking A tier. I'm going to put him in high A tier, right, right above, um, oh, come on. I'm going to put him in high A tier right next to, uh, Overdrive Ostrich, because he's pretty cool. So, all right, next up we got, uh, Crushed Crawfish from Mega Man X3, who actually has one of the most unique lore aspects to him. Uh, Crushed Crawfish, also known as the Destruction God of the Seven Seas, is actually, his AI is so messed up that he cannot tell friend from foe, and that is why he uses, um, that's why he's a maverick. So that's actually really cool. That's a unique aspect of his, of his lore. Like, look at this. Due to a flaw in his AI that made him unable to tell enemy from ally, he was violent and lead towards being a maverick even before Doppler. That's unique. That's some cool lore. Like, that's different from the other Mavericks. Plus, his design is really cool. I love his design with, like, his sharp pincers. I, I, he's definitely going really high on the list. I'm thinking GA or PA. I'm not sure if I'd put him above Peacock, though. And especially Magnus Centipede. I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking either GA or PA. Definitely, definitely on the higher end of the list because I, I really like uh, Crush Crawfish. Plus, his, his, his music is one of my favorites in the game. His, his theme is awesome. So, let's see. Uh, I, I, you'll, you'll know when we get to the top tier Maverick. I, I already know who's going in UH. One, one or two of them is definitely going in UH. Because I you, you'll see. Um, all right. Uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking PA right below Magnus Centipede because... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put Crush Crawfish in PA because his lore is interesting. His boss is not... It's hard, but it's not impossible. It, it feels very challenging, but it also feels fair. And plus, his design is, is great. So, PA it is. All right. Next up, we got Gravity Beetle from Mega Man X3. And his interesting thing is that he's actually the brother of Boomer Koanger from X1. Like, look at this. He... He was originally a Maverick Hunter, but after the death of Boomerang of Boomer Koanger, he joined Doppler's forces, and he's the uh, Steel Revenger. Yes, I will get some water because I've been talking quite a lot. <laughs> All right, um, Gravity Beetle. I'm thinking like S. I'm, I'm thinking S for Gravity Beetle. That that makes sense to me. Let's see. You guys think S makes the most sense for Beetle? Who knew that a stag beetle would have connections to flame, stag, and gravity beetle? Am I right? Yeah, ain't that the truth. All right, yeah, I'm going to put him in S right below flame, stag. Because he's... Yeah, I actually really like gravity beetle. He's definitely an, an interesting maverick. All right. Next up is Neon Tiger from Mega Man X3. And this is another example of... I love his design, but his boss fight is not great. Uh, come on. So, all right, Neon Tiger, the guardian deity of the jungle. Uh, he was originally a poacher hunter, but designed to ensure no one st stole uh, the amount of the wildlife, but became maverick after being infected with the virus. Yeah, his boss fight is not great, so I'm thinking B tier, because I, I, I at least think that that, that origin story is kind of interesting. But, and, I, and again, I love his design, but not much more than that. So I'm thinking B. Yeah, I think B tier is probably the best, just because the only thing saving him from C tier is I like his design. His design is really cool, but that's that's pretty much all he has going for him. So I'm going to put him in B right above, right above Gator. Worst thing about him is his incredible... Oh yeah, his music is really annoying. Not, not a huge fan of that song, so... Yeah, B tier it is. We're going to go right here because 
Actually, no, I'm going to put them below Gator just because the music is pretty good. I'm also going to put Gator over here because the music is awesome. All right, so Tiger, that's Tiger. Next up, we got Toxic Seahorse from X3, an another one of my favorites. Um, now, unfortunately, his boss fight is very easily cheesable, which is annoying, but I, al I also like his, um, his design quite a bit. Uh, oh, I, I guess Ninja587 doesn't like Toxic, Toxic Seahorse's design. That's interesting. We have the Water Dragon President. He took control of a large dam to restrict the supply of drinking water for humans. I mean, and he doesn't even have any personality. Yeah, ta Seahorse is going in C, probably. Maybe even D, because this boss fight is so easily cheesable, and his design is interesting, but he's not the greatest. Um, it's, it's, it's either C or D. He's not E. He's not garbage, but he's not good either. What do you guys think? Toxic Seahorse? All right, just... Just for that pun, I'm putting him in C tier because that is perfect. And yeah, I'm 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 thinking I'm thinking C tier just because he doesn't have a personality and he's yeah I'm I'm thinking C. All right, next up we got Tunnel Rhino from X three. All right, so he is the Barbarian of Earth's depths. Um. Once again, I don't think there's really much of a personality to this guy, so I'm thinking we make him pretty pretty low on the list also his boss fight can be pretty annoying mr above the council <laughs> so he occupies a rock quarry he uses his drilling weapon basically his only unique thing is he got an invitation to doppler town and now he's a maverick that that's it <laughs> so i'm i'm thinking rhino is is also c or d i'm not a huge fan of him he doesn't, again, he doesn't have a personality to him. His design is a little better than Sea. I'd say it's, yeah, I'd say it's a little better than Seahorses, but pretty much everything else is just... Pfft. And welcome in, Focus. Hope you're doing okay. We're making a Mega Man X Maverick tier list today. Yeah, I'm putting him in D tier. I, I, not a huge fan of Rhino. I don't know. Just not, not really my type of Maverick there. All right, next up is Vault Catfish from X3. All right. The rescue power plant. I mean, the fact that his he has a he's a power generator in his body is a little interesting, which he used to provide power to cities during times of crisis. That's that's a little interesting, but also yeah, I do not like Volt Catfish's design. He looks really weird. I mean, I guess that's how catfishes look, but even then, eh, not my not my favorite. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking D again, just because, actually, you know what, I, I, all right, I, I'm thinking at least C, because, C, I mean, at least he has somewhat of a lore or backstory to him, but that's kind of about it, and once again, his boss fight is really easily cheesable, so I'm thinking C, just because at least he has some lore, not a lot of lore, but at least some lore. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in C. Not not really my my type of maverick. All right, now we got Frost Walrus from X4. Uh, this is another example of uh, a boss that definitely has. Oh, I like I like how the sprite is animated. I love I love this guy's design. Look, look at him; he's a freaking behemoth right over here. And I like how his um his basically his personality is definitely um. He's basically really loyal to the uh, Repliforce cause. Like, look at this. When he was saved, he was saved by General. And basically, because General saved his life... Oh, sorry. Frost Walrus feels immense loyalty to Repliforce. Like, that's actually somewhat interesting. And it explains why, you know, why his dialogue quite a bit. So, I mean... He's definitely, he's definitely, he's ba basically his main thing is definitely just big boy, but I definitely think he's not garbage tier. I'm thinking, it, I'm thinking A, probably. Like, mid, mid, he's, I think he's mid. His, his lore is interesting, his boss is pretty simple, honestly, not really much more to it, but his, his music is okay, I guess. It's not like my favorite track in the game, but yeah, you can no damage buster only him without too, too much trouble, so I'm putting him in A. 
like really low A tier, pretty 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 close to B, but I think he's I think his lore is just enough that it puts him in A. So, all right, next up is Jet Stingray from X4. Freaking Jet Stingray looks awesome. I love this guy's design. Look at this. Like he looks badass. I'm not going to lie. Like he looks really cool. So, we're we're, we're going to definitely put Stingray uh in one of the higher tiers, and he's the Aqua Destroyer. So, oh, Ninja Five Eight Seven doesn't like his uh his design that much. That's interesting. I don't know. I think he looks really cool. <laughs> yeah. He look. What do you mean he looks like a horse? I don't know how he looks like a horse. I mean, I would think he looks like a stingray, if anything. But I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of his uh of his stage. The ride chaser stage can be a little annoying, but I lo I really like this guy's design. I don't know. He looks like a bit of a jet plane because he flies through the air, but also obviously he still looks like a stingray. So I'm thinking A or B. But you're right. His his stage isn't the best look. Remember, we're not really talking about the stages that much. We're mostly talking about the Mavericks themselves. I like his theme quite a bit. His theme is pretty good. Um. I mean, I, I, one thing that I think is, uh, he is called Jet Stingray. Yeah, exactly. So, by the way, uh, one of his lores, or at least in the manga, is that Jet Stingray is actually really sad with what he has to do. I remember it was something along the lines of, um, basically, Stingray really liked, um, or how do I put this? I'm sure it's actually mentioned on the, on the webpage. Hang on. Uh... Yeah, so he was he had great respect and admiration for Colonel, but um he actually is so when Colonel orders him to like destroy the city, Jet Stingray basically was like I wanted I don't want to do this, but obviously I don't really have a choice. So he tries to evacuate everyone before blowing up the city. He evacuated the human civilians. Like that's that's kind of an interesting uh an interesting lore bit to him. So I'm gonna put him in at least A. Just just because his lore is interesting and I like his design. So I'm going to put him right over here, right below Sponge. Actually, I'll put him above Sponge. So, A, right there. All right. So I already know where I'm placing Magma Dragoon from X4. He is the explosive martial artist. It's not even close. UH. Yeah. Magma Dragoon is UH. I fa Favorite Maverick in the entire series. He is just... He is so cool. He's he's a Kuma, yeah. So, not much more to say about Magma Dragoon. I just, I love him. He's a great he's a great boss fight. So he will not be. I I don't think he will be the only Maverick in UH. When we get to some of the X One Mavericks, there will definitely be at least one in UH. But yeah, Dragoon is awesome. I love him. All right, now we got an interesting one. We got. We got a uh, slash beast from X four. He is the Steel King of Destruction. I mean, really, it should be slash beast Leo, considering he's a lion. But um, look at this: shows dauntless courage in battle, fearing no one and loving the tension of a good fight. He appears to care, care little for status, loyalty, or morality. He joined Repla Force just so he could fight. Not the most interesting lore, but I mean, at least I, I, I guess he has some lore to him. His boss fight is pretty interesting. I like his boss. It's definitely challenging without being unfair. Um, let's see. Um, I'm thinking A, just because he's not amazing, but he's definitely above, a, a little bit above average. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking A. Let's see. Yeah, he's supposed to be a lion. Yeah, I'm going to put him in A tier just above Walrus. Because I do like his... I like his design. I like his... um. I like his boss fight. His music is pretty good. And his... I mean, pretty much the lore is what's keeping him back. So... Yeah. Alright. Next up is... Let's see. Next up is Split Mushroom from X4. He is the little demon of the wasteland. Um, I find him to be a little annoying, honestly. 
I'll admit, he definitely feels a little annoying. So... Uh, yeah. Fight, fights. The fight is a little interesting. You can also cheese it very easily. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking A tier again, because I mean, I, 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 I think he looks kind of cool. I mean, he's one of those uh, short but powerful Mavericks. He was once the administrator of the Bio Laboratory, but when the lab was shut down, he was decommissioned. But he was resurrected by Sigma, like he was literally brought back to life. That's actually kind of interesting. Um. I'm thinking I put him, yeah, I'm going to put him in A tier right above, uh, right, 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 right above Ostrich. So, yeah. That's true. Almost every X4 boss is easily cheese board. Welcome, Emload. Hope you're doing okay. All right. Next up, we got Storm Owl. Storm Owl is really rad. So we got Storm Owl, Aerial, Aerial Chief of Staff. Uh, I really like Storm Owl. He's definitely going in one of the higher tiers. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, I really like Storm Owl. Storm Eagle, yeah. I'm thinking SA. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to put him right over here. You prefer, well, I mean, Peacock is already on GA, so he's definitely quite high up. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put Storm Owl on SA tier just because I, I, his design is pretty rad. His music is pretty good. And his, um, and his boss fight is pretty fun. He, you, can, you can cheese him, but it's not as easy as some of the other ones. So, yeah, SA it is for uh, Storm Owl. And actually, I'm gonna move Blizzard Buffalo into SA tier just because I I just I just feel like I just think he is a little bit better than I'm giving him credit for. So, yeah. All right. Next up is Web Spider from X4. Often the first Maverick I fight when I'm playing his X. Uh, he's the Gorilla Commander of the Thick Forest. Oh, and I will definitely posture check. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say he's not, he doesn't particularly stand out that much, but he's not the worst. I'm thinking B, and yes, I will hydrate. I'm thinking B tier for Web Spider, that makes the most sense. <laughs> sha, 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 sha. <laughs> Not quite the same uh, thing as the enemies in Castlevania, but... Alright, I'm gonna put Web Spider in B tier, probably at the top, because I, 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 like I like his backstory, at the very least. His backstory is that he was originally a Maverick Hunter, but when Repliforce began their war for independence, he basically remained loyal to his original group and was stationed in the jungle. So, I'll give Spider that. That's kind of interesting. All right, next up is uh, Spike Rose Red from X5. Um, I like this guy's design at the very least. He looks cool. He's the Scarlet Witchcraft. So, plus I like his I like his backstory of um, his backstory is basically he doesn't he's he's not a Maverick per se, but he definitely doesn't like the Maverick Hunters because he thinks they're stealing. Which is a good point. I mean, in X5, they basically are just stealing the uh, the parts. So I'll, I'll give them credit for that. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking... I'm thinking... In, I'm thinking in the higher echelons. Not, not the super high echelons, but like SA or S or something like that. I'm going to put them in S. I think S is pretty fair. So, I'm going to put him in S. I think that's, that's definitely pretty fair. Alright. Next up is Dark Necrobat, also from X5. He is the Forgotten Soldier of Darkness. And he basically resides in a planetarium. Which is a little interesting. If the world's collapsing, doesn't that mean we can do anything? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, Necrobat looks pretty cool. That's that's true. 
And look at this. He was created. He was created as a Maverick. He was. He was created by Sigma as a Maverick three years before X Five, but escaped from Sigma's control. That is cool. I, that is a really cool backstory. Plus, he also knows Zero's uh, original status as a Maverick. So, Necrobat's going in the higher tiers. Absolutely going in the higher tiers. I'm thinking GA, because ne Necrobat's really cool. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm going to put him in GA right below, um, right below uh, Cyber Peacock. He's definitely in the higher tiers. Necrobat is awesome. All right, now we got the meme Maverick, Tidal Whale, or Duff McWhalen. I know everyone's going to meme about that, but... Um, F to Garma's unit, yeah. All right, Guardian Deity of the Oceans. <sighs> I know people are going to be really, really upset with me about this, but... I'm putting him in, I'm putting him in B. I'll, I'll put him above uh, Bamboo Pandemonium, but... I mean, pretty much the only thing that's interesting is that he's is that he's basically a guardian of the ocean and he cares about that more than anything else. His boss fight is absolute trash, though. I hate his boss. And his stage is just a remix of or his stage seems just a remix of Bubble Crabs, which is cool, but it's the same theme. So yeah, be, pretty much the only thing saving him is his interesting lore. Other than that, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Tidal Whale. And of course, the meme is pretty funny. Uh, Ninja five eight seven redeem highly of a message and asks, "Are we going to be doing a robot master tier list?" Um, basically, I'll put a poll at the end of this, and if you guys, if you guys think that the, if you guys think this was fun, we'll do this again. But if not, we won't. This was kind of an experiment, really. All right. Um, let's see. Next up, we got uh Crescent Grizzly from Mega Man X five. So let's see what his deal is we have the berserk iron claw and he's an illegal weapons broker so that's kind of interesting um his boss fight is interesting even if it is very easy so i'm thinking mid for this maybe a he's not like the most interesting maverick in the world but he's also far from terrible i'm thinking a a, t a tier or really high b tier So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Hmm. This is, uh... Sans Gaming redeemed highly my message and says, if Spike Rose Red uses Scarlet Witchcraft, I guess that makes him a Marvel Rick. Oh my god, that is... Boo! Terrible pun. Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna put him in high B. Just because I... I like the fact that he's an illegal... Actually, no, low A, because he's a... The fact that he's an illegal weapons broker is actually pretty interesting. But other than that, not too much crazy about him. All right, next up is Shining Firefly from X5. All right, uh, he is the Radiance of Intelligence. And basically, his, his deal is that he was a doctor of engineering. I think they actually refer to him as Dr. Firefly in the game. And he wanted the Maverick Hunters to kill him before he goes Maverick. Which is actually kind of a cool backstory. Like, that's that's actually somewhat interesting. That being said, his fight is kind of boring. Not the biggest fan of Shining Firefly. I mean, I like his I like his lore, but it's not it's not like an interesting, you know. His boss fight is kind of meh, yeah. I I'm thinking I put him right below Crescent Grizzly. Just because again. Cool, cool lore, not the best boss. His music is not, like, necessarily stand out for me. So, yeah, I'm going to put him right below Crescent Grizzly. I like Grizzly's uh, mu music a bit, so... Yeah, I'll put him right there. All right, uh, next up is Burn Dino Rex from X5. So, he is the Jurassic Inferno... And basically, he was... So, he's a, he's a former member of Repliforce, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but as far as I know, I don't really know much else about him. Yeah, he was part of Repliforce's disaster prevention team. Uh, with that Repliforce's knowledge, he created an illegal warehouse to hide weapons created using magma energy. So, he had little sense of loyalty. 
that's that's interesting, I guess. It's not like the most unique backstory, but he's not he's it's far from the worst. I like his boss though. His boss is really cool, so he's definitely going in at least the higher tiers. Um let's see. I'm thinking SA is probably pretty appropriate. Like right right above uh the three X8 Mavericks. Yeah, he's big. Yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh right here. Right nope, I want owl above uh Dynarex. Cause I, I like his design, his backstory is pretty cool, and um yeah, I think he's pretty interesting. So and his boss fight's pretty fun. So SA. Alright, next up we got Volt Kraken. I am not the biggest Volt Kraken fan, I will admit. He is also from X5. Uh, he is the super electromagnetic trap. Uh, pretty much the only thing that's interesting about him is that he literally... So there's there's two interesting things, actually. Basically, he is the brother of... He was a good... He was good... Not the brother of. He was good friends with Launch Octopus. And he literally went Maverick right in front of X and Zero. That's it. That's That's pretty much it. Which is cool, but... Not amazing. So I'm thinking B for Volt Kraken. Also not a huge fan of his music, so... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking B tier is probably pretty appropriate. I mean, I, I don't like this fight that much. I don't know why. I think the idea of spawning a platform in the middle of the arena just to fight him is not the best. So I'm, I'm thinking B tier for this one. Not He's not horrible. He's far from horrible, but he's not... One of my favorites. Yeah, I'm going to put him up right below Web Spider for this one. So, next up we got Spiral Pegasus. I, uh, I hate his boss. He is so annoying. The fact that he can knock you off of the cliff is really, really annoying. But, alright, we got Spiral Pegasus from Mega Man X5. The Air Force Prince. He was also a former Repla Force Maverick, which is pretty interesting. Um, but, and he, and like the, but other than that, I don't know. I don't like his boss. So I'm also thinking we don't put Spiral Pegasus too high. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is, remember, this is a Pegasus. So I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking B tier just because. I, I really, really do not like his boss fight. I find it to be very annoying. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking right below Bubble Crab because I just, yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna put Spiral Pegasus. Actually, no, I'm gonna put him below Wheel Gator. Just because, um. His boss fight's really annoying. I'm not the hugest fan of his stage either, but his lore is interesting enough that uh, he, he's not garbage. So, all right, now we got Mega Man X6. So we got Blaze Heatnix from X6. And he is, oh, he doesn't have a uh, a subtitle. That's, I feel like he does. Hold on, let me check the Mega Man X Maverick Hunter, uh, or the, let me check the Mega Man X book real quick. I can't show it on stream, but I can check it. Oh, my God, hang on. So. I do have the Mega Man X official complete works, but I can't show the insides of it, unfortunately, because otherwise I will be breaking Capcom's uh, video making policy. So I am going to double check what the name is, and that will be that. So just give me a second. Uh, oh, actually, he doesn't have a name. That's it. He doesn't have a subtitle. That's interesting. I thought he did for some reason, but I guess the X6 Mavericks do not have one. All right, well, oh well then. I'll just keep the book right next to me if I need to con consult it again. Um, so, Blaze Heatnix, definitely going to go in the lower tiers because, I mean, he looks cool, but besides that, his boss fight is, a, is an absolute joke. And, I mean, I guess it's interesting that he was originally designed by Gate to explore dangerous areas, but then he became a member of the Disaster Relief Team. You know, in order to minimize damage, I mean, you can read what's on the screen right now. But, I mean, I guess it's interesting that he was so headstrong that he was disposed of, but 
I don't know. His boss fight is definitely not the best. So I'm thinking C probably because his headstrong nature is interesting, but he's not as his story isn't as cool as the other X six Mavericks. So I'm I'm thinking C for Heat Knicks. Yeah, I'm gonna put him right above Crystal Snail because at least the story is interesting. But besides that, yeah, not much else. All right, next up is Blizzard Wolfang from X six. And he is... Oh, wait. XX Mavericks don't have a subtitle. So, Blizzard Wolfang definitely has one of the more interesting backstories. In that, basically, um, Gate tricked Alia into, into throwing him into, a, into the ocean. Which is actually really cool. Like, that's an interesting backstory. And, of course, he revived Blizzard Wolfang. But I feel like that's more of a... I feel like that's more about Alia than Wolfang. Like, I feel like that's more, that reflects more in Alia, if anything. And yes, I will hydrate. Oh, it wasn't Gate who was the other scientist? All right, well, then the, the wiki is wrong there. I'll, they definitely got to fix that. So, Wolfang's fight is also a joke. So that's not the best, but I, I don't know. I'm thinking B or C, just because... I feel like the idea that he was, you know, thrown into the ocean, with it, it, like that whole ocean story is more about Alia than Wolfang. So, I'm thinking, I'm thinking high C, low B, maybe mid B, just because his design is pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put him in B tier. I'm gonna put him right below Tidal Whale. So, yeah. All right, next up is Commander Yamark from X6, who is actually one of my favorite Mavericks. I love this guy's design. Like, look at this. He looks awesome. And um, his backstory, as you can see, is that he was created by Gate for nature preservation projects. And basically, because of the fact that he accidentally set a, a forest on fire, um... Someone sabotaged his system, which eventually killed him. Like, that's a unique backstory. I mean, his fight is a joke, but it's still an interesting backstory, and his design is great. Plus, his music is my one of my favorite songs in the game. So, because his boss fight is so easy, I can't put him in, like, GA. But I'm thinking he at least deserves SA, because his, his, his backstory is awesome, and his design is great, too. So, I'm thinking SA for this one. Like, right, right below, uh, Buffalo. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him right, I'm gonna put him right below Buffalo, because I really like his design and his, uh, yeah, his design is really cool, and I like his, um, his, why am I blanking on the word? I like his music a lot, so, right there. All right, next up is Ground Scaravich from X6. I do not like Scaravich that much, I will not be, I will not mince words he's a dung beetle uh and his backstory is that he was a treasure hunter and basically gate paid him um the fact that he went to the fact that he was killed because um this is another example of i feel like this reflects more on alia than ground scaravich basically ground scaravich went to the place where x and zero were, were found and because of that alia had to kill him which, I feel like that's more interesting... I feel like that's more reflection, a reflection on Alia than Scaravich. So, I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, B or A. Just because that's not the... I don't know. And plus, his boss fight is, is also really easy. Not, mu not much to it. So, I'm, I'm thinking B, maybe. I'm, I'm probably thinking B... Just because of his boss, and I'm not a huge fan of his design. He's not terrible, once again, but hey, Yaisha, Yaisha. Yeah. I, at least I think that's what he's saying. All right, yeah, I'm going to put him in B tier. I'm going to put him uh, right above Pandemonium. So, actually, no, he's better than he's better than Tidal Whale. I'll put, I'll, I'll put him right over here. All right, 
Time for Infinity Majinion, one of my least... I would actually say he's probably one of my least favorite Mavericks in the entire series. I hate this guy from Mega Man X6. Um, his history... Actually, what even is his history? I don't really know. Let's see. He was created by Gate. He was a test pilot. I mean, I know he can duplicate himself. He was arrogant and hasty and put many of his associates in peril. That's... That's pretty much it. I'm not a huge fan of his design. I don't know. I mean, he's supposed to be a water flea, which is an interesting idea, but I'm thinking either C or D. I just really hate Majinian. Like, his theme is great. That's true. His music is really good. But I'm, I'm thinking D tier right of... Right of actually, no. C tier just because of the music, but... He's really low C tier. If, he, if it wasn't for the music, I would... Yeah, I would put him in D. Alright, now we got Metal Shark Player. From X6. Uh, one of my favorite bosses in X6. Although that's not really much of a bar to clear. Just because of the fact that he can resurrect old Mavericks. That's really cool. Like, that's a really unique idea. And his backstory kind of leans into that. Which is that he basically experimented with DNA. And eventually was able to literally resurrect dead Mavericks, or dead Reploids. And I mean, his, his boss fight is actually pretty awesome. So I actually, I'm thinking I put Metal Shark Player in A tier. Just because, um, I mean, his mistranslation is pretty funny. His, his music is okay, I guess, not the best, but yeah, Metal Shark Player is pretty rad. So I'm thinking either really high A or really low S A. Metal Shark Necromancer, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna... This might be a slightly unpopular opinion. I'm gonna put him in SA right below Yamark. I actually really like Metal Shark Player. He's pretty cool. Alright, now we got Rainy Turtleoid from X6. Um, his boss just kind of drags on a bit. But, um... Yeah, this... This one had this this guy has a lot of lore if I remember correctly. He was so yeah, as you can see, he was he basically his, his the reason his shell was so he has such a big shell is because he was basically a member of a water purification uh team. But the fact that his shell was so OP basically, um they put him out of commission. They they or oh, sorry, they they wanted Gate to weaken him, Gate refused, and so he died. Or, no, Gate refused, and Rainy Turtleoid actually, like, he took his own life, which is actually kind of dark for a Mega Man game, especially. So, I mean, his, his boss, like I said, his boss drags on a bit, and I'm not the hugest fan of his, um, of his music, but, I mean, his music is okay, but it's not, it's not my favorite. Um... I'm thinking, I'm thinking A or, I'm thinking high A or, no, I'm thinking low A, high B. Because, I mean, his backstory is probably one of the more unique backstories, although it's really sad that he took his own life. Like, seriously, that is really messed up. But, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Turtleoid's A. Right, right below Firefly. All right. Now we got, um, Shield Sheldon. From X6. And basically his backstory. Is that he was a bodyguard. Created by Gate. And I believe he was. Yeah he was protecting Shining Firefly. Or no wait. Where, is Dr. Jim Shining Firefly? Okay never mind. He was a completely different character. My bad. Because I, I, I saw Laser Researcher. but So alright ignore that. He was basically protecting he was protecting a, a doctor, but unfortunately, um, because the researcher went maverick, uh, Sheldon also uh, took his own life, which is, yeah, that's pretty dark. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty dark. But I mean, I'll, I'll admit his boss is kind of interesting. Not my favorite boss, but far from my least favorite. Um, hmm. I'm thinking, I'm thinking right below Turtleoid is probably pretty appropriate. Yeah, X6 probably is the darkest Mega Man game. Yeah, I'm going to put him right below Turtleoid. I think that's appropriate. 
All right, now we're getting on to the X1 Mavericks. So we have Armored Armadillo from X1. So, spoiler alert, pretty much all of these guys are going to be really high on the list because these guys are iconic. So we got the Steel Armored Warrior, or just the Armored Warrior. I'm thinking GA because Ar Armadillo is freaking awesome. I love his boss. I love his theme. I love his... And, oh, Armadillo is great. I don't know, I just, I really, I really like Armadillo. He's basically, he's, he's a stoic soldier that is loyal to a fault, and basically because he's so, he's so loyal, he basically just followed Sigma. So, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, S tier, or SA. Yeah, I'm gonna put him in S, or no, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put him in SA right, right above Storm Owl, because I, yeah, Armadillo's great. All right, next up is Boomer Kawanger. I know this guy's memed on a lot from X1. I know you can stunlock Kawanger quite a bit. He's the space-time jumper or the blade demon of space and time. Um, his, his, his backstory is that he's basically a nihilist, which is kind of interesting. You don't really expect that from a, uh, <clears throat> from a, from a maverick or from a, from a reploid in general. Um, his boss, like I said, you can stun, you can stun lock him quite a bit, but by the same token, he's pretty, he, his fight is still really fun, despite the stun locking, because of the fact that he can teleport, so I'm thinking we put him in S tier, probably right below Rose Red. Yeah, alright, I'm gonna put him in S right below Rose Red. Alright. Alright, now we got Chill Penguin from X1, probably the first Maverick everyone fought. He is the Lord of the Snowy Plains, or the Glacial Emperor. And because of the fact that he was so... Basically, he was really bored with being at the South Pole. And he joined Sigma because that was more interesting. Like, what, what a what a jerk. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's interesting, but still, what a jerk. Oh, I'm going to join the bad guys just because that's interesting. I mean, come on. But, I mean, Chill Penguin is an iconic boss, obviously. So he's definitely going in one of the higher thing tiers. I'm thinking GA or PA. Just because Chill Penguin is so iconic. I'm, 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 I'm tempted to put him in PA right below Crush Crawfish, honestly. Just because his boss fight is, is so iconic. And, and pretty much everything about him is iconic. Yeah, I'm going to put him in PA. Right, right above... I'll put him above Crawfish, but... Actually, no, I'm going to put him below Crawfish, but... His boss is iconic. I mean, yeah. All right, now we got Launch Octopus from X1. Probably my least favorite of the uh, X1 bosses. He is the military general of the deep or the general of the deep sea. Um, basically, his backstory is that he basically saw humans as inferior, which, you know, basically kind of just led him to become a maverick. So... <laughs> Joining Sigma probably paid more than sitting in the South Pole and doing nothing. You're probably right, Ninja, at the end of the day. Um, I'm actually going to turn on my light. Hold on, because I noticed it's a little dark in the back. Or in the back so I'm turning it a little bit. Hopefully that will make it easier to see me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the hugest fan of Octopus. I'm, I'm going to put him high, at least above A, but not super duper high. Probably right below Armadillo, actually. Just because he's not my favorite. Uh, Alright, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move Armadillo into S, and I'm going to put Launch Octopus at SA. Just because he is iconic, I understand that Octopus is definitely... I mean, at least his, his backstory is somewhat interesting, that he always hated humans, but his boss is not my favorite. His music is probably my least favorite song in X1 as well, so... I don't, I don't hate Launch Octopus' theme. It's, again, it's very iconic, and I, love, and I love all the songs in X1, but it's my least favorite of the X1 songs. So, All right, now we got the epitome of stunlocking. We got Spark Mandrill from X1. Um, backstory is that he... Is that basically he was, uh, he was basically under Sigma's command, and he just followed Sigma. That's pretty much it. So not the most interesting backstory there. I mean, his song is incredible, though. So, he's definitely going in at least SA, just because, you know, X1 Maverick, but he's not, like, amazing. I'm thinking, 
I'm thinking right above Octopus. Yeah, I'm going to put him right above Octopus in SA. Just because, you know, uh, I mean, fighting him, fighting him Buster only is really cool. But yeah, as both Ninja and Trashman says, he's the epitome of big, strong, dumb guy. So yeah, SA it is. All right, now we got one of my favorite Mavericks, Sting Chameleon from X1. I freaking love this guy. I know you can stun lock him pretty easily. So he's not going to be in like the highest of high tiers, but he's still really cool. You got the... Oh, actually, I, I just realized I didn't read... Um, who did we do last? We did our, um, Spark Mandrill last. Spark Mandrill is the uh, Lightning King of the... Lightning King of the Bullet Fist or the Quick Fisted King of Lightning. Whereas Sting Chameleon is the Spirit Sharpshooter of the Haunted Forest or the Frightening Forest Strike. He looks great. I love his music. Um, his backstory is basically that, um, he basically kept call kept being called like a coward or whatever because of his ability, which is something he can't really control. And be because Sigma basically offered him a place in his army, he saw that as an ability to get back at those who wronged him, which is actually kind of interesting. So I'm thinking Chameleon is in S tier or maybe even GA because I really like Chameleon. His boss is really easily cheesable though with the weapon. Um, all right, I'm going to put him in low GA just because I, just because if his, if his, if his, if his boss wasn't so easily cheesable, um, yeah, he would be really high up there. All right, here's another one of my favorite Mavericks, Storm Eagle from X1. He is going in the very high tiers because he is iconic. And my phone is ringing for some reason. I don't know why. All right, with... So yeah, we got Storm Eagle, the Prince of the Skies or the Nobleman of the Skies. He is going in at least PA because he is one of the best bosses in X1. His, his backstory is that basically he is, like I said, he's a gentleman and he was basically forced into doing Sigma's bidding because he lost him in a duel or something like that. So he's going in probably either, he might even go in UH, honestly. So... Yeah, you know what? I This might get me a little bit of flack, but UH, he is amazing. I Storm Eagle is great. He's one of the best Mavericks in the entire series. So, yeah, we're, 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 he's, we're putting him in UH. All right, looks like we're shifting over to X8 now as we have uh, Optic Sunflower from Mega Man X8. So let's put him in. We have the assassin from the depths of outer space or the assassin sent from the artificial mind. And basically, he was the management program of the Helios training area. And he basically caused it to go haywire. So, yeah. Basically, he lost his mind because, um, you know, he was, because he was dealing with a training area and like virtual reality and whatever. And yes, Ninja, you are right that there are no female Mavericks, which is interesting. Um, all right, where to put Optic Sunflower? I'm not quite sure. All right. Uh, where do I want to put him? Where do I want to put him? I'm not quite sure where to put Sunflower, because I like his boss. His music doesn't particularly... He doesn't really have any music, actually. Um, Not a huge fan of his... Uh, I mean, his design is kind of cool. Personality is not really standout-ish. I'm thinking A, because he's not terrible. He's actually pretty interesting, but... Or he's, he's at least passable. But... I don't know. Where, do you, where would you guys put Sunflower? Because I'm at a bit of a loss here, honestly. I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck between like maybe A, maybe C, something like that. I'm not quite sure. Where exactly do I want to put him? I'm going to put him in A for now. Just because I, I think he's at least somewhat interesting, but he's not like the most, 
interesting Maverick out there. All right, so now we got the X7 Mavericks because we have Ride Vorsky from X7. Ugh. I hate the X7 Mavericks. They're really annoying. We have the Charging Man. Um, pretty much the only thing that he that's interesting about him is that um, you think Sunflower is in B tier? Uh, yeah, that's fair. I'll put him above Web Spider, though. So, yeah, I'll do this. That's fair. Uh, Ride Borski is going in in the really low tiers. I'm, you know what? I'm going to put him in, uh, in, uh, <sighs> I'm tempted to put him in E, but I also don't think he's the worst of the bunch. Uh... Ooh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, the X7 Mavericks are terrible. Yeah, I'm gonna put him in E. He's just really damn annoying. Alright, now we got Snipe Anteater from X7. Oh, uh, here he is. So he's the keeper of the Electronic Labyrinth. I mean... I hate his design. I don't know why. I just really don't like his design. But I mean, I also think that his back, you know, his personality of telling X, you know, what is good and what is evil. It, it's kind of interesting, but not much more than that. I'm going to put him in D. I'm not a huge fan of Snipe Ant either. So, yeah. All right, now we got Soldier Stone Kong, who is probably the least bad of the X7 Mavericks, if I had to choose. So we got Soldier Stone Kong, the strong arm of the deepest green. I like that he is aware that the red alert is being manipulated, but that's about it. So I'm thinking C tier. Sorry, I got something in my nose. I'm thinking C, like really low C, right, right below... Uh, Infinity Majinion. Pretty much the only thing that I like about him is that um is that he's aware that Red Alert's being manipulated. And even then, that's not. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna put him in D. I'm gonna put him below Tunnel Rhino, but I'll put him right there. So Yeah, you got you guys are right. He's, he definitely belongs in D tier. Alright, Splash Warfly from X7. Oh boy. He is the Pursuer from the Blue Sea. Alright. Uh, I don't like Warfly that much. I don't really know his backstory, but I, if I remember correctly, it's not very interesting. I mean, yeah, all he does is look down on other Reploids. That's, that's, a, that's pretty stupid, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put him in E tier. Also, Heiner should be at the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to put him in E right... He's less obnoxious than Ride Borski, but he's he's pretty stupid. So. Alright, now we have Tornado Tanyan from X7. You know, around and around. Or Tornado Tanyan. Yeah. So, yeah, Tornado Tanyan, the dancing assassin. Um also pretty low on the list. I like the fact that he's based off an onion. That's unique, I guess. Pretty much all it is is that <laughs> he likes broadcasting that he's dancing. Um, either D or E, because Tanyan sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put him in E, right, right below Warfly. He's he's stupid. All right, now we got Vanishing Gungaroo from X Seven. Um. I like the fact that he, I like his, I mean, his boss is at least somewhat interesting. It's not a good boss, but at least it's somewhat interesting. The pure wild child. Um, I like the fact that he is, um, that he's kind of the opposite of a lot of the other ones, where he basically just wants to, <laughs> tornado, yeah. I, I'm thinking Gungaroo belongs in D tier, because I at least like the, the boss fight a little bit better than some of the other ones, but that's, that's about it. I, I don't really like anything else <laughs> about Gungaroo. So I'm going to put him in D. I'm going to put him right above uh, Soldier Stone Kong. So, yeah, I'll, I'll put him right there. 
All right, last X7 Maverick. We got Wind Crow Rang, who is basically just discount Storm Eagle. That is like the most unique thing about Crow Rang. He's the dark winged rival. He's so edgy for no reason. Um, that's that's about it. <laughs> he he's basically just discount uh discount Storm Eagle. So. I'm going to put him in D tier, right right below Gungaroo, because that's pretty much all there is to him. So. All right, back to the X1 Mavericks. We got Flame Mammoth from X1. One of my favorite Mavericks, actually. I freaking love Flame Mammoth. He is the Fiery Oil Tanker, or Blazing Oil Tank. And basically... Um, he basically, his, his personality is that he, he loves being super big and he wants to use that to his advantage in Sigma's army. Not the most interesting personality, but I mean, his music is awesome. I freaking love Flame Mammoth's theme and his boss fight is actually pretty fun. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking SA probably right, right below Mandrill. I'm thinking is appropriate. Yeah. I'm going to put him right over here. And we got the very last Maverick, which is Earthrock Trilobite from Mega Man X8. So I like the fact that he's based off a of Trilobite. He is the insect inhabiting rich mineral deposits or the bug in the ore vein. And basically, uh, he excavates minerals for Sigma, which is interesting. I like the fact that he's based off of an extinct species. That's... That's unique, I guess, but there's not much more to him than that. So I'm thinking either B or A. Let's see. He's yeah, he's he's not there's not much to him. Um let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna put him in I'm gonna put him in high C tier because I'm gonna put him uh I'm gonna put him right above Crystal Snail. Because there's not really much more to him than that, other than, you know, he's an extinct species. Oh, is it pronounced trilobite? If it is, I apologize. But yeah, there is our Mega Man X Maverick tier list. So uh, that means the best Maverick is Magma Dragoon, and the worst is Burn of the Ground is yeah, Flame Heiner. So yeah. There we go. All 64 stage Mavericks. Ooh, that took a while. Took about an hour and 30 minutes to be precise. I'm going to hydrate. Yeah, and stretch. Actually, I'll finish the uh, water bottle there. All right. And I'm also going to stretch as Chivas. Okay. Ugh. All them Mavericks, yep. And I will probably post this to Twitter if I can. Uh, let's see, save download. Uh, let's see, one one twos Mega Man, oh, Mega Man X Maverick tier list, and I will say, um, created on a Twitch stream, and I will download the image. Appear right there. Give me a second so I can save it. And I will also save it. And there we go. Uh, yeah, I'll share the list on Twitter. We got an Amazon Luna. Um, we got an Amazon Luna uh, ad right there. <laughs> nice. All right, there we go. So yeah, that is the complete Mega Man X Maverick tier list. Again, this is just my opinion with help from you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys uh, following my Twitter and also liking the post. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one and a half hour marathon of 
ranking the Mega Man X Mavericks. And actually, what I'm going to do right now... Hold on a second. All right. All right, so I just put up a poll. You guys can respond. You have about two minutes to respond. And basically, the poll is, did you like when I created the Mega Man X Maverick tier list? If you guys liked it, I will definitely do more of these in the future. Um, if I already have two in mind, being the... Mega Man Robot Masters and the Mega Man Zero Mutos uh, Reploids. Perhaps even the Mega Man ZX Pseudoroids would be pretty fun. So if we do, if you guys do, if more of you guys vote yes, we will do more of these. But if not, uh, this will probably be a one-off thing. I just thought it was interesting to do. So yeah, feel free to vote if you want. No uh, requirements to have bolts or, or screws or bits or anything. Just, you know, just a casual poll. And... You guys have about, I think about a minute and 30 at this point to respond. So, yeah. And by the way, once this poll ends, uh, I'm going to take about a, I'd say about a 10 minute break before I start the next thing. Because that didn't really take very long. And we'll probably, yeah, we're going to, we're going to finish Castlevania 3 on stream, probably. Uh, for those of you who are watching the live version. For those of you watching the VOD version, uh, th th the stream is going to end right here. So, yeah. I do hope... Yeah, the Mythos will be very interesting. And yep, it's time for Grant. You are right. All right, about 15 seconds before the poll ends. So, all right, let's see. What are the results? Results are, wow, all of you said yes. So, all right, we will definitely do more of these in the future since literally all of you, it was 100% to 0%. So, yeah, we are definitely going to do more of these in the future since you guys liked it so much. But, anyways, that is going to end this stream just for now. Uh, for those, Again, for those of you guys who are watching live, stick around as we're going to do some Castlevania in a minute. And for those of you guys who are watching the VOD version, uh, thank you all so much for watching. And I am 112 signing off for now. See you all later.